The logic gate is a fundamental building block used for designing digital circuits. The logic gate is made from transistors, but at the moment we're just going to treat it as a black box. The logic gate's got some inputs, normally two, and an output. So the state of the output depends on simple logical rules that apply to the inputs. So we can tabulate the inputs in a truth table for, you know, for different inputs. So the three primitive gates that perform the logical operations and or are not. Then we can have negated versions of these in which the output is inverted. And finally, there are exclusive gates that are created by connecting these primitive gates together in a particular way. So first, we're going to look at the AND gate. So this is a symbol here. So we can see we've got our two inputs. We've got A and B and an output Y. And the inputs, because this is logic, uh, logic gates, the digital devices, their inputs can be either, the inputs on the out bits, outputs can be uh, one of two states, either a zero or a one. Sometimes you might say this as a high or a low or a true or a false, but it's all this, you know, they mean the same thing, it's different terminology. So as the name suggests, for an AND gate, the output Y will only be a one when both A and B are a one. So for all these other situations, so zero and zero will give us zero, zero and one will give us a zero, one and zero will also give us a zero. So it's just a situation for where A and B are one, we'll get a one on the output. So an AND gate is used for binary multiplication, and you often see the uh, logical function written as A dot B. So we can call this conjunction, so you see this particular symbol, or intersection. So these are the different ways you can see the AND function written down. So going on to the OR gate, so now this is a symbol on the left, so again we've got uh, A and B inputs and our output Y. And now we can see the truth table. So as the name suggests, the output will be a 1 when A or B is a 1. So 0 or 0 gives us a 0, but 0 or 1 will give us a 1. 1 or 0 will also give us a 1, and 1 or 1 will give us a 1. So an OR gate, when any time one of the inputs is a 1, the output will be a 1. So this, an OR gate carries out binary addition, so you can see, you'll see it written this way. Sometimes it'll also be called disjunction, where it's written this way, or the union operator where it's written this way. So NOT gate. Is a bit different than that, the fact we've only got one input, so this is our input A and our output Y. So an OT gate is also known as inverter, very easy. We've got a zero on the input and that will just get inverted to a one on the output and a one on the input will just give us a zero on the output. So an OT gate just inverts the input. Yeah, so when it's got a bar over the top, that's when um, an input is inverted. There's also no negation or complement. So these other ways you can see it written. So an AND gate is essentially an AND gate followed by a NOT gate. So that's what the little bubble on the output means. It's just um, an AND gate with the output inverted. So again, we've got our inputs A and B and our output Y. So we know first, so we write down an AND function. So we know from previously, an AND, we only get a 1 on the output when both A and B are a 1. An AND gate is just the inverted version of this. So 
the inverse of binary multiplication is all we're written in this particular way. So we'll see later NAND gates are the property of fun functional completeness. So this makes them very powerful logic gates. And we'll see that we can make all of the logic functions purely just from NAND gates. A NOR gate is a similar to a NAND gate and it's just an OR gate with the output inverted again given by the bubbly. So anytime you see a bubble the output is just inverted. It's the same shape as an OR gate. So we'll just write out the, the core function. So we know an OR function anytime one of the inputs is a 1, the output's at 1. So the NOR gate is just the inversion of this. So now get the inverse of binary addition, normally written by, by this. So it's also a function of complete, so it means you can make all the log gate, logic gates from NOR gates. And a NOR gate is useful for checking when both inputs are zero. So you see this case here. You only get a one on the output when both inputs are zero. We've got a buffer. That's a bit like a NOT gate, so a NOT gate is inverted and a buffer doesn't actually change the input at all. So if you have a 0 on the input, you get a 0 on the output. 1 on the input gives you 1 on the output. So it might seem that's not very useful, but the output is the same as the input. So in terms of the, the digital logic levels, the voltage is the same. But they're commonly used to amplify the current in a circuit or for impedance matching. Now we come to the XOR gate. So again, as the name suggests, it's similar to OR gate. So you can see it's got this the same shape as the OR gate here. And now we've got this additional line on the back. So we've got our two inputs, A and B. So this is an exclusive OR gate. So the output is a one exclusively when only one of the inputs is a one. So essentially this will be the truth table for an XOR gate, because for standard OR gates, we've got this as a truth table. But for this situation, when the both inputs are one, we've got a one on the normal OR gate, with an exclusive OR gate, where these inputs are both one, the output is a zero. So an XOR gate is implemented using the primitive lo logic functions AND, OR and NOT. This is a symbol for an XOR gate, so a circle with a cross in it. In a sense it represents an inequality function, so you can see you only get a 1 on the output when the inputs are not equal or when they're different. So we'll see why this is later in the course, but an XOR gate is actually, it's not a gate in itself. An XOR gate is constructed from the primitive gates, so AND, OR and NOT gates as shown here. And we'll see why later in the course. So an XNOR gate is essentially just an XOR gate, again with the output inverted as we can see here. So we write out the... XOR function as we've just seen. So know that that is a truth table for an XOR. So an XNOR is just the inversion of this. So not exclusive OR. And again, so this is implemented using the primitive logic functions AND, OR, and NOT. And now this represents an equality function. So we can see the output is a 1 when the inputs are the same. So when the inputs are equal, the output will be a 1. And again, we'll cover this later in the course, but this is how you construct an XNOR gate. So it's not a gate in itself. You combine AND, OR, and NOT gates together in this particular way, and this gives us an XOR gate, XNOR gate, and we'll see why later. So we can use Venn diagrams to represent the different logical functions. So as well as using truth tables, we can also use Venn diagrams. So for each of the circle, 
each input sorry is represented by a circle then we'll say inside of the circle is a one and outside of a circle is zero so for a for example so everything inside here a is equal to one and all the other right side so all this area is when a is equal to zero So then we can share the different segments depend which overlap between the two different inputs depending on the output so when the output is a one we use a solid fill and when the output is a zero we'll just leave it uh, transparent so looking at these um, Venn diagrams here we can see for an AND gate the output is equal to one only when a equals one and b equals one and for a buffer, it's just that's only got one circle, it's just a one input. So that's just the output is one when a equals one. So we can see for an OR function, anytime both inputs is a one, the output will be a one. And so on. So a Venn diagram is just an alternative visual way of looking at the truth tables for our logic gates.